.NET 7 has just been released and we'll show you some of the new ASP.NET Core features. Remember to hit the red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash round the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn .NET, Dependency Injection and Blazor WebAssembly with Round the Code's online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. You'll probably need to update Visual Studio 2022 if you're using it with .NET 7. You'll probably find that the .NET 7 SDK has already been installed. If it hasn't though, you can do a search for it and you'll end up on this page. On this page, we've got two different types. We've got the SDK here. This is fantastic if we're building web apps in .NET 7. Like with previous versions of .NET, we've got Windows, Mac OS and Linux support. We've also got the runtime over here. The runtime is specific if we're just running an app on a particular server. Just to know, if you're running it with IIS, you'll want to install the Windows hosting bundle. The reason being is that it installs a module called ASP.NET Core Module V2, which supports IIS and running off.NET 7 apps. The first feature we're going to have a look at is Rate Limiter. This allows us to limit the number of requests for an API endpoint. Now you can configure it in program.cs and there are four different options. There are the fixed window, sliding window, token bucket and concurrency. We're having a look at the fixed window limiter. So within this, we've set up a test policy here as the policy name. We're limiting the number of requests to one with a window of 12 seconds. So we're only allowing one request every 12 seconds. When we go over that limit, we're allowing free requests to be queued up. If it goes beyond that, if there's more requests within that time frame, the server will throw an error as a response. And the queue processing order, once the queue is being unhandled, it will go with the oldest first. Another thing as well is we need to call this use rate limiter extension method to ensure that we're using the rate limiter as part of the web app. To test it in action, we add this attribute called enable rate limited and we specify a parameter name with test policy. Now test policy is the name that we've called it up there. So that corresponds to the parameter that is in this attribute here. Testing out the rate limiter, we test it out. So that's returned a 200 response. Now because we've gone over the limit, it's waiting until the window has elapsed and now it's returned a response. If we change the queue limit now to zero, so if we go ahead and rerun the test, we can see the first request is fine. However, as we have no queue limit, it's just returned a 503 response. The next feature we're looking at is parameter binding with dependency injection in API controllers. Now in .NET 6, in this API controller, we've got this iMyService, which has been registered as part of dependency injection. If we were to use it as an action, we'd have to call this attribute from services. But with .NET 7, we don't need this. So let's have a look at the my service. So what this is doing is setting a my time to the time that it is now, and it's inheriting an I my service interface. If we go into the program.cs, we can see it's been added as a scoped lifetime. If we run that now in Swagger, we can see it's managed to get the current time. We're now going to have a look at minimal API improvements for .NET 7. The first one we're going to have a look at is open API improvements. We've set up a get request here. So the root is minimal slash API. It's expecting an integer as a parameter. And then it's returning that particular parameter as part of the response. Now within .NET 7, there's a new package that we can use and it's got this extension method with OpenAPI. Within that, we can provide an annotation in this instance for the parameter that we're passing in. So the parameter is count and the description that we're adding is represents the count. Let's run that and see it in action. So we can see when we're running Swagger that the annotation has been added to that particular parameter. The final feature we'll look at is file uploads in minimal APIs. Now in .NET 7, minimal APIs support the iForm file and the iForm file collection. 
And we've demonstrated this here. So we set up a post API endpoint with a root of upload slash file. It's passing in an iform file type and we're setting the file name to myfile.jpg. What this is doing is it's writing the file to our folder storage and then it's returning the file name. Let's give that a run and see if it's going to work. So we're going to test it with this file here. We've uploaded that file. It's returned a 200 response and it's returned the response of myfile.jpg. Let's see if that we can find that file in our web app. We can see that the myfile.jpg file is there and we can see that it has been successfully uploaded. To try out the .NET 7 features covered in this video, go to roundthecode.com slash .NET hyphen samples. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.